on, everybody? Welcome to the Big Dog Podcast. I'm Josh Wilson, and got my man Jonathan Mack in the studio. What's going on, Jonathan? Nothing much, just hanging out. Nice. We're, we're going to spare you all all of our football conversation that we just ran through. Of course, we get in the studio, and he's got to ask me about Notre Dame, and we'll just leave that in the past as we did. So, But, but it's all good, but nothing's going on with you except for you're getting ready to go on a little trip. Yeah, business as usual. West China. Coast? Yeah. L.A.? You're out there, what, a month? Yep. You working on the record? Uh, Whatever yeah. you all call Every, it, the album? Everything. Okay, everything. The, the record? Yeah. They call them records still? Uh, I I mean, I do. But okay. it's like kind of referring to it in the technical sense, but nobody does in terms of like, oh, are you going to get that on vinyl or like get a record? Right. Well, that's good. That's big time. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, I look at it callously because there's still more <laughs> there's still more work to be done. Well, hell yeah, but there's just a step in the process, right? And yeah, but this is all the time. This is one of those uh like uh brush your teeth, wipe behind your ears type of steps. It's, it's gotta be done. Gotta gotta make moves. Make it happen. That's awesome. Well, we'll miss you while you're gone, but we'll see you in a couple of weeks. We're excited for you though. That's cool to do that. Um so look, jumping in here real quick and kind of want to talk to y'all about um who do you owe? Who do you owe and why? Um, it, what motivates you when, when you're not motivating yourself? What gets you to, to get out of the bed? What gets you to do the brush your teeth, wipe, wash behind your ears, the stuff that's got to be done, that there's nothing sexy or fun about it. It's just things that, that have to be done. When you don't want to do those things, but you got to do those things, or you're nasty. So you got to do those things. But like the, the stuff that's mundane, but ultimately it's the consistency in the mundane that leads to uh, success and getting opportunities at bigger things. What pushes you to do those things when you're not motivating yourself? And so, you know, who do you, who do you, Oh, when I, when, when it's not worth doing it yourself, why, why, what, if you're in sales, if, if you're frustrated, you're not doing great, you're having a bad month, you know, you, like leads are coming in, but you're not doing anything with them. What gets you to make that phone call and have be in the right state of mind and use the right tone and have the right presentation and, and speak with a smile on your face when you're just pissed off about the world and the day or the situation, but what motivates you to do what you have to do regardless when you can't motivate yourself, because I don't care how positive a person you are, you're not, you're not always just fired up. You're not always just excited to do the deal. Jonathan, you as a, as a musician and passionate about music and loving music, when you've got to go and record, or, you know, you've got to, you need to be writing right in order to come up with, with more content and more music deadlines that are in place are there regardless of whether you feel like it or not. There's obligations because you mentioned, hey, I'm going on this trip. It's business. We well, yeah, bi business means there's a time frame. Hobbies are whatever, <laughs> right? So there's there's a time frame on it, and so you know it it has to be done. So you have to figure out like how how do I motivate? How do I get motivated? How do I maintain being motivated when I'm not necessarily motivating myself? So a little hack that I have for me that I think about is who do I owe? And what I mean by owe is like, I owe it to Devin to not fail. I owe it to Logan and Kiki to not fail. I owe it to my mama to not fail. And the, the people that believe in me to not fail. Now, what they would probably define as me failing and what I define as me failing probably look very, very, very different. And that's when you know that those are the people that really ride with you because it doesn't necessarily matter what your personal objectives and business objectives are, whether you hit those or not, because they're with you and they love you. Their love isn't attached to anything tangible. You know, it's, it's you, it's a bigger thing and there's comfort and peace that comes in that. But what I find is when I'm not motivated and that happens a lot where I'm not motivated, I think about them and not necessarily their expectations for me, 
but what my expectations are based on what I feel I owe to them or what they're deserving of. Maybe it's the life that I want my kids to live. Maybe it's opportunities that I want to create, you know, for them. Maybe it's things that Devin and I used to sit in her busted ass Chevelle or Chevette, I'm sorry, you know, in high school and dream about, you know, what life could look at as we're looking through the floorboard at the road going by. Right. And it's, it's those conversations with two silly kids who just were in love, but there were things that were talked about and I've always been the bigger dreamer and, but I don't see it as, as dreams, I see these things as opportunities. And I don't think God puts anything in your mind, um, as a dream, people would call it, that isn't something that's realistic or, uh, uh, attainable. And I'm not talking about, you know, physical things necessarily guys, like for everybody, it's different, but I don't think you have these images, uh, by, by chance. I think these things come to you because it is part of your purpose. It is part of the direction. And so when we were young and having these conversations, you know, yeah, they, they may have been, you know, joking and, and, and in context, whatever, Oh, this is just a thing or, Oh, that would be cool or, or whatever. But what, what's the, what's at the root of that desire? Like what, what part of that, when you're, when you're driving down the road and you're in a busted old car and you see something pull up next to you, and you're like, man, that's pretty nice. I, I bet they're awfully comfortable in there. I bet they don't got to worry about it being 105 degrees, right, Jonathan, with no AC, I right? Mean, <laughs> I Whenever someone asks me what my dream car is, I say one with AC. There you go. That's about it. That's it. But that I mean, that's a big that's a big damn difference. If I had a car with no AC, that would be my dream car too. A car with AC. I don't care what type of car. It is a car with AC, and I'm good. And that was the dream at a certain point. I mean, it really, really was. But it's there's something that stirs inside of you, um, and maybe it's a fleeting moment, but if it's something that keeps on coming back, there's something bigger to it. And we talk about process a lot, and, and the, the process is the part that you got to be in love with in order to, to reach things that you're going after, goals and, and benchmarks. You know, you got to love the process, though, but you're not always motivated during that process. And when you don't motivate yourself, what is in place to keep you going? What is that? I just told you what it is for me. It's conversations I've had with my son about goals that he has and you know, for his life and, and po- things he wants to accomplish and do. And it's on him to accomplish those things and do those things. It's on me, though, to the best of my ability, create opportunities and prepare him to be the type of person that can work through the trials and the tribulations and the hard parts, because that's going to happen. That is a, that is a part of life. When those difficulties hit, that is a part of life. So what motivates you when you're up against the wall and you can't motivate yourself? If you don't have anything, you got to find out what that is because th- you're just going to keep going along, kind of hitting a barrier. You're just going to go along and wake up and be tired, have a bad day. This morning, I could not get up out of the bed. I just could not. Devin was already downstairs. The kid had bounced. The kids had bounced. They had already gone to school. And I was just, man, I'm sitting here like I'm I'm just tired. I don't want to. I don't want to go. I don't want to get up. I got up out of the bed twice and laid back down. And I was like, I got stuff to do. I got a lot to do today. I'm headed to town on Thursday. Part of the team's heading out tomorrow. I've got stuff to do. Could not get going. Just could not motivate myself. Oh, I feel you. I woke up this morning super late and I had like a UVA advising appointment. One of those like alumni services things. Yeah. Uh, that was at nine. I woke up at eight forty five, realized at nine o'clock that I needed to do that. And then I also got an email that said, Hey, you have a doctor's appointment that you scheduled months in <laughs> advance at nine oh five. Yeah. So had to reschedule that advising appointment, go to the doctor's office, eat something on the way to the doctor's office, sit down at the doctor's office, and they say to me, So how has your fast been going? You feeling okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I had to Mess cancel that, that doctor's appointment. Right. And now I'm here. So well, we're here. So that's a good thing. But like, that's, that's the deal. Like it doesn't always go as planned. 
And so I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Well, you know what motivated me this morning to get up and go is I knew Nick was going to be texting me with accountability to, hey, we in the gym. I'd already seen Tank's picture come through. He's in the gym. Nick's already at the jujitsu studio about to get his workout in and go roll or whatever they call it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't mess with that stuff. Um, but I also don't mess with people that do mess with that stuff. I'm trying so. to start. I'm trying to start. <laughs> oh, it's, really? It's hard to find it. Uh, hard to find a gym, but it's not. I mean, you get a gi. Yeah. Uh, you learn that you're going to be beaten up for a while and you <laughs> accept it. Keep coming back. So Man, I feel like I get beat up enough. I don't know that I need to go into and pay somebody to beat me up. I would like to do it just so it could take my mind off of my mind off of things. Cause when yeah. someone's trying to choke you out or break your arm. Yeah. You're not thinking about the you're other not, stuff. You're, yeah. You're not thinking <laughs> about your car with no AC that you got to drive home. With. Man, look, so you're trying to find a gym. Yeah. All right. I'll ask Nick if he knows anybody in this area. Cause he's real tied in with like that community and like the Gracie's and stuff. Like, Nick's a beast. Like yeah. he, he really gets into it, but I know he's going to be texting me. So what do I do? I get up, I'm heading in and sure enough on the drive in, I get a text. Josh ain't in the gym. Nope. I'm heading there though. I'm sending it. And so I got in and I got my stuff done this morning and, and, and it was all good, but it's that accountability and that motivated me. My friends motivated me. They knew I needed it. That's good. They started bringing it up more about a week ago. It's like, Hey man, we haven't seen this this part like no i mean i've been in it i've been doing this i've been doing that but there's this accountability piece so that motivated me the other stuff we got going on you know on those bad days it's like man okay yeah i don't feel like doing it but what i surely feel like doing less is letting down my people letting down devin and the kids my mom my team so i'm gonna do what needs to be done and in your life, there's certain aspects where you've made decisions to take on certain responsibilities and you don't get to opt out of those things anymore. You know, you've taken on those responsibilities. That's you and your, yours alone. And if you're going to operate with integrity, you've got to execute whether you're motivated or not. If you don't have those external motivators, challenge you to kind of find some and figure out if all you're doing and working towards is to benefit you and nobody else, this isn't going to be a long road for you because self-satisfaction is, is never enough, never enough. Cause self-sabotage is going to come in and take out that self-satisfaction because self-sabotage is going to come in and tell you this is satisfaction and it's going to trick you and it's going to get you off your purpose. So what is that greater motivator for you when you cannot motivate yourself it's got to be legitimate it's got to be truthful when you don't want to write when you don't want to go record what what is it that pushes you and it's more than your desire to do music it is when i jump in and fill the tasks of someone that i pay all my staff to do that i shouldn't necessarily be doing at this point I've got to remember, okay, I'm doing this because this is an integral part of our organization. If this doesn't get done, that impacts families who work for us. This impacts everything down the line. So I need to step in and do it. I don't want to do it. There's a part of me that says I shouldn't have to do it, but I'm going to get in and do it regardless because that's what has to get done because that's the commitment that was made. And I really, and I, Jonathan, I'm interested to get your input on this. I really feel like people do not, um, uh, they don't have a problem not honoring their commitments uh, of late. It's, it's wild to me. And, you know, I don't, and it's not a, it's not a millennial thing. It is not a, a, a younger, a kid thing. Like it's the kids, like they're brilliant what they have access to, how they're able to learn, how they're able to process information and volumes of information. Like there's brilliant kids out there who are highly motivated, hardworking. Um, they just think of stuff differently and do things. But one thing I'm seeing across the board, and I'm talking 40, 50 year olds, 60 year olds, all the way down to teens is a lack of commitment or holding up to a commitment that was made and just bouncing from the thing that not necessarily job, but just commitments in general. And I don't know, is that something you feel like you see among like kind of your peer groups or no? Uh, I think that uh, across people in general, I, cause I don't want to just blame it on like the past two, three years, but I think that it's like a lack of accountability that I don't know where it, where it stems from, like a lack of being held accountable. 
Um, and I think personally for me over the past two years, uh, in a personal example, like family is blessed, uh, blessed financially. I haven't necessarily had to want for anything extremely. I'm extremely grateful for that. Uh, so I haven't always been held financially accountable. And as I start to transition into adulthood, that's something I'm figuring out. Yeah. Uh, and it's not something that I could just sit back and say, well, I'm not going to uphold, uh, these commitments or these loans that I might've taken out in my parents name uh, right. or military grants that my father might've helped me acquire, uh, for scholarship. I'm not just going to bail on that commitment. Uh, yeah. I got to be accountable and it's something that I'm learning every day, but you know, I don't understand where that stems from, but to me, it's just a lack of being held accountable in the past. You yeah. can't just bail. No, that's fair. Um, we just seen it a lot. We just seen it a lot and, and it's fine. I mean, it's like, we always roll and it's, it's, it's whatever at that point. But I just wonder, I'm like, man, what do we need to do to help prepare or foster people? Like when they come in our doors, right. Are there things we need to be doing better to help them to honor commitments better? You know, what can we, what can we be doing to fill that void that maybe they didn't get early on and the importance of, of what we do and we say we're going to do it, it actually being done and the trickle effect by not. Right. Yeah. My, my big question with that, you know, as it relates to, you know, not only business, but commitments in general is, uh, how often do people, in your opinion, do you believe that they understand the commitment? Or do you think that they're just kind of putting on like, yeah, I understand what I'm getting into. And then Mm -hmm. when the rubber kind of meets the road, they kind of back off, uh, you know, six to 12 months down the line, because that definitely happens. But, you know, I think that it's also an understanding the commitment type of deal. Yeah, I think people um, understand fully, but they put blinders on to uh, what it takes to uphold that commitment. They, They look at what upholding the commitment may provide but they all of a sudden struggle when it's looking at what is required to get that end result. Right. Well, yeah. Commitment and consequence are two very, uh, like, yeah, they're married up. They're married up group (laughs) group things, you know, (laughs) they're, they're together. And so I think, I mean, we'll see it. People will be like, Hey, I'm interested in getting into the training business. Uh, I want to transition from my current, you know, profession into this world. And it is, it is a difficult transition. It's super, super difficult. And we see it all the time. It's like, Hey, if, if you want to make this transition, sure. It is difficult. It is tough. This is what it requires. It is hard work. We are not just sitting around playing with puppies all day long. And all of a sudden it's like, ah, you know, I can't, I can't do this or I can't make the math work. And I'm like, this was math that we discussed long ago. I mean, I remember when I was an intern, I said to you, this is really unique, like dog training business. It's cool that you're getting into this. I would love to be a part of it. And you said to me, not, not that unique. There's plenty of them out there. People try. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't really believe it until, you know, I worked here for years now and I'm like, God dang, so many people trying to start dog training companies. Yep. And they do. And a lot of them have success and a lot of them don't. Um, it's just, uh, and there's, there's plenty of opportunity for everybody out there and anybody who's going to you know treat animals right. And, you know, and, and do the right things, man, I wish them the best of luck, you know, whether they're with us or not with us, you know, it's like, go out there and, and do awesome and grow your business. Just like, just like we've done. Um, but it, it's tough and people need to understand when they make those types of decisions and really indus- any industry, if you're sitting somewhere working for somebody right now and you, you're thinking about, Hey, I'm, I can do this. I, I do all these things anyway. I'm going to go do it on my own. Make sure you have a, a pretty healthy understanding of, um, you know, what it actually takes to do that, to maintain that commitment. Because when you bounce on commitments, working for somebody else, you know, you're, you're insulated from that. You're not hurting your name or your personal reputation. You're hurting that organization's, you know, reputation. Um, but when you, when you go out on your own and and you do those things and you're still a person who doesn't maintain commitments, now you're burning yourself up, you know, and maybe you've bounced from place to place being insulated by companies. And so your personal reputation hasn't gotten dinged, but now all of a sudden you are that front man, you are that deal that there's no more insulation for you and it's going to be you. And you can't keep bouncing from place to place because now you've tarnished yourself. Whereas you've had a shield of an organization protecting you that you've kept going around and disappointing and, and doing things like that. So, so it's, it's tough. And I think 
I come back to the motivation piece. When, when you have that motivation and those motivators in place beyond yourself and your self interest, I think it makes it a hell of a lot easier to also maintain your commitments because the commitments you're making should to a certain degree serve your interest, right? I'm making this commitment to my health. I'm making this commitment to my employer. I'm making this commitment to an organization I'm going to volunteer at. You're making those commitments to serve a purpose, but particularly if it's employment related or health related, it is for your best interest. And so maintaining those commitments will serve you. So you've got to stay motivated to meet those commitments. So I come back to when you don't, when it's not enough for you to motivate yourself, because there's not always going to be people pulling you along every day. There's not always going to be people lined up cheering you, telling you how great you are. Who do you owe that keeps you going? Who are you doing it for? And they don't need to know all the crap that you're going through. Devin and the kids, man, they don't know what goes on during, during my days. My family, they, I'm not going home and just dumping the list of crap that we ran through to, to, to keep us moving forward and get it done because it doesn't matter. They don't need to know all that. They need to know that I'm showing up with results at the end of the day. Results that allow us to move forward towards what our goals are and our objectives are. They don't need to know all the crap. That's not their responsibility. That's my responsibility. But the love and the belief they have in me is that external motivator for me when I cannot motivate myself. When meeting my own internal goals and objectives aren't enough, disap not disappointing them motivates me enough. Even though they could care less about like a lot of those end game things, that's enough to keep me going and have me making the moves that we need to do and the decisions that we need to do and running through wall after wall after wall. So I'm not that good of a jumper, so I can't jump over walls, but I'll run through a damn wall <laughs> because that's going to drive me when I can't drive myself. So what drives you when you can't drive yourself? It's important. It's going to help you meet your commitments. It's going to help you get further faster. It's going to help uh, improve character and operating with integrity. What motivates you when you can't motivate yourself? We appreciate you. The next couple of weeks are going to sound a little different, look a little different. Jonathan's going to be on his West Coast road trip. Uh, so we're going to be doing some things remotely, uh, but it's still going to be great. So it'll be great content. We're still be coming out to you every Thursday, but it's going to have a little bit of a different feel. I'm excited about it. We're going to mix it up a little bit. And uh, Jonathan, wish you the safest travels, brother. Thank you. Have thank fun you. in California. Enjoy the weather. Work hard. Come back to us safe. And guys, we'll catch you next time on the Big Dog Podcast.